Hello, welcome once again to Leto's Law. I'm Steve Leto. It's here to talk about selfies and people dying for selfies. I was just talking to my brother about this the other day, um, and you know, it seems every now and then in the news a story will pop up about somebody who died while taking a selfie, and um, you know, it seems to be happening more and more. And it's one of those things you wonder: is it really happening as often as we think it might be, or is it just because it shows up in the news more, or what's going on here? And so I was happy to see that somebody had written an article. Catherine Miles at Outside Online has written an article uh, about selfie deaths as an epidemic. Selfie deaths are an epidemic is the headline of the article. And she says that a recent report found that 259 people died in a six-year period while stepping out in front of the camera in often dangerous destinations. Uh, so she went deep on the psychology of selfies to figure out what's behind our obsession with capturing extreme risk-taking. Now here's the deal. I'm not going to get into the psychology of this, but I do want to talk about some of these because they're just baffling to me. Uh, in 2014, a woman named Gigi Wu, who is an experienced hiker from Taiwan, posed atop a snow-covered mountain clad only in a bikini. Uh, the stunt resulted in a series of undeniably gorgeous photos, so she uh, decided to go out and do some more of this. So she kept at it for the next four years, photographing herself on the summits of more than 100 of Asia's most impressive peaks, always in a bikini. So the images are absurd and beautiful, the writer points out. And so she picked up quite a big following doing this, uh, amassing thousands of fans. Fans loved the way she worked both the climbing and the bikini personas and encouraged her to keep at it. By the way, she points out, she didn't actually do the hiking in a bikini. She hiked with the bikini, and then when she got to where she's going, she changed into it, took a photograph, and very quickly changed back out of it before she froze to death. <laughs> so this January, Wu went on a several-day traverse of Taiwan's Yushan National Park, which is home to a bunch of 10,000-foot peaks. While attempting to summit the park's central mountain range, the 36-year-old model fell an estimated 60 to 100 feet and landed in a remote ravine. Uh, she managed to call out with her satellite phone and indicate that she was in severe uh, physical peril, uh, and they sent uh, word to uh, emergency workers, uh, but the weather was bad and the temperatures were quite low, and so by the time they found her, she was dead. Uh, she had written some notes and so on, but it took them 43 hours to basically get to her. So in the following days, they pulled down her Facebook and Instagram accounts and replaced them with memorial pages for her. Uh, and so it's one of those things where you wonder, you know, how often will something like this happen? And, and you know, as people strive for social media numbers, what else will they do? So this is only the latest in a string of selfie-related fatalities, or killfies, as the author puts it. Uh, and she gives some more examples. Canadian rapper John James McMurray died last October after crawling out onto the wing of a Cessna while filming a music video. Last October also saw the death of travel bloggers Manakshi Morthy and Vishnu Viswanath, who apparently fell while taking a selfie at Yosemite's Taft Point, which is a popular rock outcrop with an 800-foot drop. A month before that, Tomar Frankfurter, an 18-year-old from Jerusalem, also fell to his death in the same park while reportedly taking a selfie at Nevada Fall. Last July, three stars of High on Life, which is a popular YouTube thrill-seeking adventure travel show, plummeted to their deaths at a waterfall near Squamish, British Columbia. And I apologize if I'm mispronouncing Squamish, uh, but it's a funny word. And in late March, a man from Macau fell a thousand feet to his death while attempting to take a selfie on the rim of the Grand Canyon. The Grand Canyon. Uh, and there are others, she points out, hundreds you've never heard of, but they know about them. Uh, a student who fell 700 feet at Ireland's iconic Cliffs of Moher in January. The 68-year-old woman who was fatally scalded in a Chilean geyser. The man in his 50s who was struck by lightning while hiking with a selfie pole in the Welsh mountains. The teenage girl swept away by an unexpected wave on a beach in the Philippines. Uh, and the author of the article points out that for each of these that's famous, there's more that are not famous, and there are also many, many, many close encounters. 
And we've heard of some of these idiotic ones, such as somebody who climbed over the barrier at an Arizona zoo to take a selfie with a jaguar and was mauled in the process. Uh, and most people who hear that have to stifle the desire to say, um, isn't that what you get when you climb the enclosure at a zoo? Um, let's see what else we got here. Oh, 2014 bear selfies taken by visitors at Lake Tahoe's Taylor Creek Visitor Center during the creek's annual salmon run. And several reports in recent years of individuals who have been gored by bison at Yellowstone while trying to take a selfie with one of the beasts. <laughs> now, I will admit, of all the animals we're talking about here, if I could take a selfie with any animal, it would be a bison. I think bison are impressive, majestic animals. I would love to have a picture of me and a bison right here looking over my shoulder. That'd be so cool. But I don't have one. You know why? <laughs> the last bison I saw was in an, in an enclosure on the other side of a fence. And I didn't feel like climbing the fence for the selfie. Um, authorities say that no one's died yet taking a selfie with a bison, but it's going to happen one of these days. Uh, selfies have also resulted in Peloton crashes at the Tour de France and may have contributed to a helicopter crash over New York City in 2018. You may have heard about uh, where all the passengers died on board a helicopter and they think there's a chance that one of the people trying to put their feet out the door for a foot selfie, another thing, uh, may have accidentally hit the emergency fuel shutoff in the process. Uh, so... Um, the author of the article points out, you know, it's easy to write off these tragedies as catastrophically bad judgment. Armchair internet commentators have had a field day with each reported death. For every lament of young lives lost in the wake of Morthy and Viswanath's deaths, you'll find an equal number of comments about how the two were surprisingly stupid, coddled, careless, or self-obsessed. When the Stanislaus County Sheriff's Department released its medical report in January, it stated the couple was intoxicated with alcohol prior to death. Scorn on the internet erupted further about narcissism and stupidity. And um, the medical examiner did try to make it clear that it was impossible to determine the amount of alcohol in their systems or whether or not it played a role in the accident. So uh, a 2018 study published in the Journal of Family Medicine and Primary Care found that of the 259 verifiable selfie-related deaths recorded between 2011 and 2017, more than a quarter of them occurred while the selfie taker was engaged in what the study authors called non-risky behavior. So a quarter of the people were just simply taking a selfie and somehow they got killed in the process. The other three quarters were doing something probably too stupid to be trying to photograph, but they did it anyways. Uh, to unpack that further, the authors found that the majority of deaths involving young men do appear to have been caused by risky behavior, while the actions of over half of the females who died taking selfies were deemed non-risky. So, there's a lot of, you can try to go through there and figure that out. Uh, Sarah Diefenbach is a professor of consumer psychology at the Ludwig Maximilians University of Munich and lead author of the 2017 research article, The Selfie Paradox. She says that extreme or otherwise, we take selfies for all kinds of reasons, to communicate with people we love, to build self-esteem, to curate our self-image, to chronicle our personal histories, and increasingly to build our personal brands. And you know, when I was in school, <laughs> I realized this is a long time ago. When I was in school, we didn't know the phrase, our personal brand. Um, we may have had a personal brand, but we didn't know what it was, and we certainly didn't try to cultivate it in social media, because back then social media was literally um, people writing notes back and forth, or people scrawling things on the walls that, you know, that we didn't like, but we didn't know who wrote it. Um, the branding may be new, Diefenbach says, but the desire to control our images and communicate with our community is not. In fact, she contends this kind of behavior is part of our very DNA. Our species evolved as hypersocial creatures uniquely concerned about how others perceive us. We have always had a very basic need for self-presentation. A guy named Will Storr wrote a book in 2017 called Selfie, How the West Became Obsessed, he agrees, he says, we've always wanted to document our feats in living color. We just had to wait for technology to catch up before we could do it efficiently. And, you know, that's that's really the thing. And, you know, it's kind of funny thinking back how cell phones evolved. I mean, I remember when I had a car phone. <laughs> I had to go to my car to make a phone call. <laughs> and then, of course, you got a handheld cell phone that would work anywhere. 
And I remember when they first put cameras on phones. And back in the early days, you could take a photograph with your phone, and it was a very, very low-res digital photograph. And then the question is, what do you do with it? Now it's on your phone, you know? And it wasn't until much, much later that people started coming up with apps to get the photograph off your phone or to manipulate it while it's on your phone or to upload it to Instagram. None of these things existed. I remember actually having a discussion with somebody, and I don't remember which one of us is pro and which one of us is con, but, but, but at one point in time, pretty much everyone who lived through that area said, or the era said, why do we need a phone to take a picture? And it's because people at the time were still thinking that the thing you hold in your hand that you talk into is a phone. And, and in reality, it's not, okay? That thing is now a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, it makes phone calls, but it also texts, it takes photographs, it shoots movies, it allows you to access the internet. It'll actually, like I said before, manipulate the photographs you just took. Uh, and of course, one of the things we've discovered is you can hold it at arm's length and take your own picture. You know, and I mean, I, I, I've told you before that I've had, you know, situations where I've handed my camera to somebody and said, here, take my picture back in the old days. And I've actually before been places where I took my 35 millimeter camera and I'm pointing at you because I'm pointing at my camera and I'm shooting this video on a 35 millimeter camera. Uh, it's not, but it's the same, you know, body type. It's a DL, uh, a DSLR. Um, and so the, the point is that there were times when I would take my camera and place it someplace and point it at either myself or other people and go back and forth a bunch of times. And using a little remote trigger, I could then hit the shutter and take a, take a, take a selfie back in the old days, you know, using the modern technology of the time. <laughs> so I did that. But, of course, it became so much easier that you just do this, you know. So, I mean, there have been places I've been where I've got wonderful photographs that I'm not in. And I've got other ones where I've managed to shoehorn myself into the picture, but I had to find a place to put my camera or whatever. And so this is a huge leap in technology that we can take a photograph of ourselves at various places. Uh, and so, you know, it's, it's kind of funny that it does play into a basic human instinct we appear to have. But the problem, of course, is that, you know, many of these people who are doing this stuff where they're dying and taking a selfie... They're not placing the camera on a rock to photograph three guys or four guys sitting at the edge of a river, okay? They're doing things like roofing, and that's not taking roofies. That's jumping roof to roof on high buildings looking for a beautiful photograph that shows you, you know, other people where you are. Uh, Victor Thomas um, is another guy who does uh, crazy stuff like this. He's a Brooklyn native, and he found a niche taking photos and selfies in the tops of Manhattan high-rises, often dangling off of an edge or the precipitously placed foot. Um, and so since he's been doing that, he now has more than 32,000 followers on Instagram, and he also has sponsorships and invitations to exhibit his work uh, that he says he'd never get otherwise. And of course, that's all part of his personal brand. So, you know, here's the thing. Um, there is apparently something about humans that we love to document what we do. We love to tell other people about it. And of course, if you realize that, hey, the cooler photograph you take, the more dangerous photograph you take, the crazier photograph you take, more people will see it. And suddenly you're, you're doing those kinds of things to get that kind of attention. And I think that's really the big difference here. You know, the photographs I've taken with my own camera, sitting on a rock, pointing at myself and my brothers and my friends or whatever, um, are not photographs I ever thought I'd be showing to any more than just a handful of people. Um, in fact, there's a photograph I'll put up on the screen, or I may have already done it because I haven't edited this video yet. <laughs> there's a time travel question for you. Um, I have a photograph that, that I have it framed, and it's on the wall of my office. And it's been seen, I'm guessing, by a couple dozen people, probably a hundred people if you count all the people who walked in my office and looked at it, not knowing necessarily who the people were in the photograph. But the photograph is going to be seen by more people when I stick it in this video then I've seen it in the entire time since I took it more than 10 years ago. And that's just simply the change that's taken place here. Our desire to take pictures is the same. Our desire to document what we do is the same. Our desire to tell stories is the same. But the audience has grown. And the audience, of course, now includes many, many people that we'll probably never meet. We may not even know they exist. And they're just a part of the faceless group that forms a big number next to a successful social media post. So what i got to tell you is this. People die for selfies. Don't do it. Uh, you don't want to encourage that kind of behavior. Uh, but of course, um, if you're tempted to do stuff like that, you know what's funny is you can go to a crazy place and take a photograph that looks dangerous it isn't. And I would suggest you do that. Now, in your mind, you might think, hey, that's cheating. 
but you know it beats dying for it. There ain't no selfie worth dying for. So, like I said before, there does appear to be an epidemic of people dying from selfies. I will put the link to the article in the description of the video. Uh, the article is by Catherine Miles, and it's outdoors online. And um, I encourage you to read it if you want to see the psychological stuff that goes into the explanation as to why humans will do crazy stuff, even if it's simply to take your own picture <laughs> to prove to other people that you've done crazy stuff. Questions or comments, put them below. Otherwise, talk to you later.